Heading into integration in calculus, we're going to start by looking at approximating areas. So if I look at a positive curve, so a curve that's above the x-axis, and I want to approximate the area under a curve, let's look at the following. We've got f of x, x squared plus 1. We want to approximate the area from 0 to 3. So a good idea with the tools we currently have, if I want to know what the area under the curve is, the areas that I'm able to calculate very easily is areas of rectangles. So if I take that area under the curve from 0 to 3, and I divide it into three blocks, from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. So three partitions. And I calculate the areas of these rectangles and I add them together. That is going to give me an approximate area for under the curve from 0 to 3. But you can see it's not going to be exact because there's an area, let me change the color here, there's an area here that's not in, that one's not in, and that one's not in. So I'm going to fall short, but let's just look at this process to get where we're going. So we're going to call these the left-hand sums because my rectangle touches the graph on the left every time. So how do I find those areas? I'm going to use L3 because I'm chopping it up into three pieces and I'm looking at the left to find the area of each rectangle. Now the area of a rectangle is length times breadth. We know that very nicely. So the width is one. The height is the function value at the left-hand point, so it's naught. So it's the width of 1 times the function value at naught. Plus, for the next one, the width of 1 times the function value at the left-hand point, which is 1. Plus the width of 1 times the function value at the point 2. So that's the three rectangles that I'm adding up. You can substitute that in, find that area, and you will get a value of 8. So that's my left-hand sum, if I divide it into three rectangles. But we see that it's not quite accurate. Now, similarly, let's see what we do. What happens if I say, take, have the same question, but I'm looking at the right-hand sum. So if I look at my right-hand sum, if I chop it up into three areas, then I look at the rectangle where the right-hand point touches my graph. So I'm looking at this area. Then I'm looking at this area. Then I'm looking at this, this is quite a high one, at this area of this rectangle. So that's the right-hand sum. So as you can see, this one's going to give me an overestimation because there's, it goes a bit higher than the curve. But let's see what that value is. It's the width times the function value at the right-hand, so the function value at 1, plus the width times the function value at 2, plus the width times the function value at the right-hand side, which is 3. Now, here's my function. You can calculate those function values easily, and you'll get 17. So, between these two, we can see our area should be somewhere between 8 and 17. So, that's a good start. Now, formally defining the left endpoint approximation and the right endpoint approximation, the next two slides, you can pause and read it carefully. We looked at an example. But we're saying that area is then approximately equal to the left-hand sum. And then the left-hand sum, I start on the left on my intervals. And my widths are the same. And the right-hand sum, you can pause this one and read it through. The area is approximately equal to that. So now let's look at the same problem we had. We saw there's a lot of gaps. So how do I make this more accurate? Well, what happens if I look at L6? So now I divide it into six areas. So the width is now a half every time, and I'm looking at the left-hand point. The width is a half, I'm looking at the left-hand point. The width is a half, I'm looking at the left-hand point, and so on. So what's happening is I'm fitting more rectangles in. And this underestimation is becoming less, or it should be, as I go on. I'm not going to draw them all, but we can see what it is. So let's calculate that L6. So the width is a half for every one. So it's a half times the left-hand point, so it's f of naught plus a half times f of a half plus a half times f of one plus a half times f of one and a half plus a half times f of one and a half 
plus a half times f of 2. We're getting there, plus a half times f of 2 and a half. We should have 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sums. So we add them all together. And yet again, you can use your calculator. There's the function that I substituted into. Now, to make it easier, just take note. We multiply each of these with the half. So you can take a half out as a common factor. And you've got f of naught plus f of a half plus f of 1 plus f of 1 and a half. And you can calculate it like that, plus f of 2 plus f of 2 and a half. That's a bit easier calculation to do. And that'll get you. You can pause, work it out, and see that you get 9.875. All right, well, our previous left-hand sum of 3 gave us 8. So now we're moving closer to a better number. Similarly, the right-hand sum, if I look at R6, that's also going to get closer. So that'll be a half times. Now I'm looking at it at the right-hand point. So I'm not starting at naught. I'm starting at a half. So f of a half plus f of 1 plus f of 1 and a half plus f of 2 plus f of 2 and a half plus f of 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's 6 of them. And when I say f of a half, it means substitute half into my function. And you can do that and calculate it. So the right-hand sum is going to give you 14.375, where r3 gave you 17. So we're moving closer and closer to where we want to be. So then you ask yourself, how can I get the most accurate approximation of the area under the curve? Well, the more rectangles I get, the more accurate my approximation gets. And that gets us to the concept of a Riemann sum. Now, a Riemann sum says, take a function, and that's defined on a closed interval from A to B. Let P be a regular partition. So I'm chopping this function up into partitions that are the same width, delta x. I've got a spelling mistake there. All right, and now for each sub-interval, I choose one point in the interval. So let me just show what I mean. So with left and right, we either chose, if we divide this into a partition of one. If I look at the left-hand sum, I chose the point that touched the curve on the left-hand side. If I had the right-hand sum, I choose the one on the right-hand side. Now we're saying I can choose any point because... This is going to become a very small width. I'm looking at a width of 1, but it can become any width. So I'm saying we can choose any point there and use that as the height of my rectangle. So we call it xi star. So this is our Riemann sum. Define the sum. I'm dividing it up into n pieces. The sum where i goes from 1 to n of f of xi star delta x. So that's the area of one rectangle. I add them all together. So the question is, how do I get the most accurate area under the curve? Well, let n tend to infinity. And that is the concept that we've already dealt with of limits. So the area under the curve is then given by the limit as n tends to infinity of that Riemann sum. So that is how I get the exact area by letting n tend to infinity. And that is how integration is defined. The definite integral from a to b is the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum when i goes from 1 to n. So that is the definite integral. So this is the notation that is used to show this sum. Now, that is providing the limit exists and some other conditions, but this is what we use to show the sum. Now, in other videos, we're going to introduce the fundamental theorem of calculus that shows us how to calculate that without having to use the limit, without having to chop it up into triangles. But that's coming in another stage. So that is how we approximate areas under a curve by calculating Riemann sums.